Hi, it's Dr. Smith from Wigston Central Surgery with another video helping us to work well together to provide you with the best care that we can. Now today I want to talk about something that we often get questions about and that is cholesterol and the treatment of cholesterol including statins. So what's the big deal with cholesterol? The reason that we take cholesterol seriously is that if your cholesterol is high or the bad type of cholesterol is high, then you're more at risk of having heart attacks and strokes. And so we now have information that can help us predict in the future your risk of having these problems. And obviously, if we've got that information, we want to do something about it. The challenge with cholesterol is that having a high cholesterol will not make you feel poorly. So you won't realize that you're at an increased risk of these problems unless you have some blood tests to help us identify that. It's a little bit like having a high blood pressure. It rarely causes symptoms, but having it for a long period of time will increase your risk of having heart attacks and strokes. So this is a serious problem and we want to take it seriously. So if we acknowledge that cholesterol can be a problem for a lot of people, do we really need statins? Well, let's talk a little bit about statins now, shall we? The most commonly used statin is atorvastatin, and that's because it's the one that tends to work the best to reduce your risk of heart attacks and strokes and to lower your cholesterol. If you've not previously had a heart attack or a stroke, then the most common dosage of atorvastatin to be on is 20 milligrams, although there are doses lower and higher than that. But if you have previously had a heart attack or a stroke, you'll probably find yourselves on 40 or even 80 milligrams of atorvastatin to try and reduce the risk of you having such an event again. Now statins tend to get a pretty bad press in the media because of their side effects. And of course, like any medication, they can have side effects. A co very common one that people can find troublesome is muscle aches, especially affecting the upper leg. Now studies have been done to try and work out how many people actually get these side effects. And we don't know the exact number, but it's probably about 5%. That's one in 20. So if you've had 20 people on statins, probably one of them would get those really bad muscular side effects. So there's loads of people who are on these medications who are not having side effects. I found a really helpful video that talks about some of the serious side effects of statin usage. I'll put the link at the bottom uh, in the description to this video so you can get a bit more information about that there. But as well as statins, I want to talk you through a, a whole host of other medication that has now become available for cholesterol management. Now, statins remain the first thing that we use, but with all these new medications coming out in the last few years, we are having people on more and more medication to try and lower their cholesterol and to try and reduce the risk of heart attacks and strokes. So let's have a look at all the different medications that we've got going on for these treatments. So we'll see if we look at this list, we've got uh, statins that we've already talked about, we've got azetamide, a benpidoic acid and inclisiran. These are all quite new medications that are coming for cholesterol management. And those ones in red at the bottom, they're for managing triglycerides, which are very much like cholesterol. They're fats in the blood and they can also increase your risk of heart problems and strokes. So when do you need to get tested for your cholesterol? Well, we do know that there are some conditions that make you at more risk of having a cholesterol problem and also having an increased risk of heart attacks or strokes. So right from the outset, if you're someone with diabetes or a high blood pressure, or if you've got chronic kidney disease, we know that people in those conditions often would benefit also from having their cholesterol closely managed and probably also treated. But additionally with cholesterol, there are lifestyle factors. If you drink a bit more than the recommended amount of alcohol or if you're a bit overweight again you're more likely to have cholesterol problems so we're aware in this cohort of patients who especially want to be treating you and managing your cholesterol in order to lower that risk of heart attacks and strokes recently we've had some up-to-date guidance and we've made a new practice policy around cholesterol management and that probably means that we're going to be getting in touch with more people about their cholesterol than we have in the past the particular things that we're looking at in your cholesterol blood test is your LDL, which is your bad cholesterol. And we're also taking into account something called your Q-risk, which is a score that looks at your risk of heart attacks and strokes over the next 10 years. Nationally, cholesterol management has been identified as something that general practice wants to get better at. And so it's likely we'll be getting in touch with more patients in order to try and help you bring your cholesterol down uh, and to reduce the risk of having heart attacks and strokes. 
as you can see, there's lots of information to take in when it comes to the topic of cholesterol and statins. But hopefully you can realize that the whole point of us trying to treat your cholesterol is to lower your risk of having heart attacks and strokes in the future. Of course, there's nothing that can be done to make that risk zero. As people age and with other health conditions, the risk of these problems does increase. But we want to do whatever we can to prevent you having harmful medical conditions in the future. So if we do get in touch with you in the future about um, your cholesterol or having a blood test, I'd encourage you to seriously consider whether going on one of these medications might be helpful for you uh, to try and reduce your risk of heart attacks and strokes in the future. And I should add that no drug company is giving me any kind of money at all uh, for making this. Um, I'm just saying what I think is probably going to be helpful for you as a patient. But of course, if drug companies do want to give us money, then that also would be great. <laughs> I hope that's been a helpful video and um, we'll see you soon.